this is not a political statement. In fact, for this, I urge you to put your political leanings aside. It's important for leaders to learn from the lessons presented to them in everyday life. Much of what I have learned about leadership, both good and bad, came from observing and evaluating what I've seen others do. For the last year, we've had a very real, very unwelcome, but still very useful study of leadership as national, state, and local government and business leaders have struggled to respond to the coronavirus. This is an especially valuable opportunity for study as the virus and its effects have been experienced around the world. In fact, not since the Great Depression of the early 20th century has there been an event that has affected just about everyone on the planet. As you perform your evaluation, follow two rules. One, approach your analysis as dispassionately as possible. Emotional response is normal, but doesn't result in the best analysis. And two, find facts, not just opinions. Don't rely on a single source of information. What really happened? What did others really do? There will always be people who want you to believe a certain way, but good leadership means making a concerted effort to find the facts. And that's another reason for rule number one. Now consider what happened. As with all critical situations we encounter in life, this situation has been very fluid. So start your evaluation from where we first learned about the virus then follow the trail as information changed. Did world leaders take the correct actions? What did they do right? What could they have done better? Given what you know, how would you have responded? The virus was not only a serious health issue, but quickly became a serious economic issue. One of the hardest tasks a leader has is to weigh everything that is known about a situation and then take the action that is the best approach, knowing that not everyone will agree. The leader cannot afford the luxury of listening to only one source of information or favoring one expert over another. Decisions must be based on what's right for the organization, or in this case, the population as a whole. Were they? Why or why not? And again, what would you have done? Each nation took a little different approach. And within the United States, there were at least 50 different approaches to what can best be described as disaster mitigation. For this evaluation, you have the benefit of hindsight. So gathering as much information as possible which leaders took the best approach to meeting the overall needs of their populations? Were there any leaders who seemed to be more successful than others? Why or why not? Although we will likely not have to respond to a disaster of this magnitude again in our lifetimes, there will be other crises for you to deal with. What lessons can this situation provide that will help you be more effective in dealing with those crises? Now, shift your analysis to business leaders. The impact on business, especially small local business, has, I believe, been unprecedented. What have you seen business leaders do? In your own company and in others you've observed, did company leaders attempt to adapt? Did they embrace a flexible approach or hunker down to wait it out? For those who have survived, why? For those who didn't, again, why? Finally, the hardest evaluation. What did you do well? And what could you have done better? Sort through all the hyperbole and the loudly opinionated and find the real answers. Remember that the best way to prepare 
for the next crisis is to learn from the current one. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, uh, click on the subscribe button right here. I'm always loading new content. And speaking of content, in the description below, there's a link. Go to that link. It takes you to our website where you can download a lot more uh, great information. And it's no sales. It's all free. Just want to give you some tips, tools, and techniques to help you be a more effective leader.